What is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny gameplay video. Hey, let's talk about the Trials of Osiris. Here on Black Shield, this is the first map in which we get to uh, utilize the new changes courtesy of the latest patch. Now, let me come out of the gate by saying I really like how much um, primary usage there is. I'm seeing a butt ton of primaries. I'm winning a butt ton of matches with only one or two special weapon kills because my primaries are feeling very relevant. Now, again, it's a forced primary meta, but hey, I will, I will take the good with the bad in some cases. As far as primaries are concerned, this is one of those cases. So, lots of primary weapon gameplay. And I'm using things like, I had uh, you know, a couple of flawless runs using the Antipodal Hindsight. I mean, most people are gonna be like, wait, what's that? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> You'll see it in this gameplay. But um, yeah, primary's feeling so crispy. And a lot of people are uh, apparently appreciating the increased accuracy of hand cannons because there is a lot of, there's about a 10% increase in, in total overall hand cannon kills in the Trials of Osiris this week. Now, uh, I mean, yes, people are camping, but you're getting the teams that are no land sidearm campers in the center room, but you know what? You can shut them down. I ended up playing a couple of cards on my blade and just having a butt ton of fun doing something that I never enjoyed doing before and that is playing invisibility plus uh, sticky grenades. Because these teams, there's a ton of them, just camp in that room. And I'll show you some gameplay here in just a second, but here's the antipodal hindsight. I'm just loving being able to use these things. And uh, I contributed a little bit to the sidearm increase. There's a huge increase in sidearm kills, and by huge I mean it's astronomical increase in, uh, in sidearm kills. And I'll talk about that in a second, but, but um, first I want to share with you guys my strategy. Just if you're having trouble on this map, uh, teams that are camping inside, first and foremost, don't peek the angles if you don't have to. But if you have the proper loadout, here's what I was doing. I was kind of serving as the ramrod for my team. I'd come in here, invis, I'd stick a guy and get out, and then we've got a body down that we can work with and we can uh, re-challenge and uh, kind of take control of the room. You could also wait for special and ambush them as they as they make a break out of the room for the special boxes. Uh, that's a strategy as well. You see here, just doing it again and again. <laughs> it's it's viable, it works, trust me. And uh, even if you can't clean up the last kill, it's NBD. If you get two guys down, easy peasy lemon squeezy teammates can uh, push in on these no land dudes. Here's the thing, let me talk about the no land sidearm increase. So. I've seen a lot of early feedback that is pretty much just downright 100% rage at the no land sidearm quote unquote meta. Here's what I think we're going to see. I think over time you're going to see a little bit of a drop off. I think no land's going to be popular for a while just because it is, it, it's an elimination playlist, right, in trials. Now the, the overuse of, of no land in my experience doesn't really spread outside of, of the elimination playlist. Uh, you see it a little bit in threes, but I mean, maybe one guy on the other team is using it in sixes. The, the thing is, it's not a good team fire weapon. It never has been and never will be. So here's your strategy is team fire, team fire, team fire, team fire. These uh, no land users, flank them, pinch them, make them split their focus. But no land is not a good team fire weapon and people are gonna struggle against teams that can uh, gang up on them. So. Uh, that being said, sidearm increase, I think people are using them not because they're overpowered, because there's not, I mean they're not. Uh, a sidearm can do everything a hand cannon can do, but a hand cannon can do it at greater range. I mean, uh, sidearms have pretty much the exact same time to kill as your mainstream hand cannons, uh, but then their range drop off is much, much closer. So people are using them for the convenience aspect of it, not because they're OP. And I think eventually people are going to, you're going to see a little bit of a dip in the sidearm usage. Uh, maybe not, I mean, it'll never go back down to where it was, just because of the, the special ammo changes. But um, I think it will dip. Uh, honestly, that statistic that you're seeing doesn't mean that sidearms account for most of the kills in Trials of Osiris. It just means that it counts for most of the, the special weapon kills alone. Now, uh, I will remind you that if you get a shotgun, if you get uh, shotgun ammo, you wait for the, you know, you play uh, the round out, and you're not like 100% hyper aggressive, you get access to a special box uh, shortly into the round, your shotgun is pretty much gonna outperform these things most of the time. So if you're a patient player, and you're a patient team, and you're focusing on team fire for the first kill or two or whatever, 
to pick up your special and then get the secured win. Uh, sidearms aren't going to be very powerful against uh, you know the mainstream uh, special weapons. So yeah, there it is. That's my thoughts so far. I think that we'll see a drop off in these things. Uh, I don't think that they're necessarily OP. I do. I, I will say I think the sidearms should go down to their starting ammo capacity every time you respawn. I, think, I don't think you should keep all of it. But I think you should just uh, start with your two mags or whatever. But anyways, hope this was helpful, guys. Let me know what you're thinking, what you're experiencing so far. And uh, I look forward to catching you guys in the Trials of Osiris.